Last lesson, we built the VEX IQ Clawbot and learned how to write our very first C++ program to move the drivetrain. Today, we will have a look at how to move individual motors to grab and lift objects. Hello, I'm Mr. Code, and this is part two of my C++ for VEX IQ tutorial series. Learning to code in C++ can give your robotics team an edge when it comes to judging at the VIQC competition. It is super fun and easy to get started. So let's dive right in. I'm going to load up the same file that we left off with last time. So here we're going to comment out all of the code that we wrote. So here, instead of putting double slashes uh, in front of every single line of code, it's going to take a long time, I'm going to go forward slash and then star. And what that does is it's uh, going to do a block comment. It starts a block comment, see how it turns all my code green. And then at the end of my comment, I go star forward slash. That will comment out a whole stack of code. It's a little bit of a shortcut, so that you can code out uh, any of your, so that you can comment out all of the code that you don't need. Uh, another thing that we didn't go through last last time is this error section here. So this is the console area where you can see any kind of errors that pop up. You may have already seen that you get these red messages when you have mistyped something or misspelled something. Don't be afraid of them. Uh, when you read these little little error messages, they are designed to help you so that you uh, fix your code and make sure that uh, it is running properly. All right, so for our individual motors, I'm going to have a quick look at my robot. Okay, so my arm motor is connected to port 10. So that's my up and down motor for my, um, my robot. So here, if you've uh, built your robot correctly, then this is the motor uh, that is connected to port 10. And then my claw motor, let's have a look, follow my claw motor, is connected to port 4. So 10 for the arm, 4 for the claw. Okay, let's go back into our software. Going to add two devices. We're going to add a single motor uh, for number 10. Oh, we're going to also rename it in a bit. Number 10. And then you can name your motor. So right now it's by default, it says motor 10. Uh, I'm going to name it arm, okay? Uh, that way it's going to make it easier for you to differentiate the different parts of your robot. So arm, uh, and then add another one, uh, motor number four, and this is our claw, okay, done. Okay, so once you have added your arm and your claw, you will get these uh, new blocks. Over here on the left-hand side, uh, you can see that there are now these motion blocks. Uh, here we have our code for motor spin, uh, motor spin four, and motor stop, uh, set velocity, all the same kind of uh, commands and functions that we had in our drivetrain, but instead of are moving two motors at once, we're just moving one motor, okay? So here we're going to test out, make sure that we can lift our claw. So here we're going to go spin four, uh, 90 degrees. Uh, I'm not sure about this 90 degrees. I wanna change the units that I want to spin for. I click on this uh, X, uh, question mark. You can spin for direction, the rotation, and the units. So we can go degrees or turns. Mm. Okay, degrees or turns. Let's go, let's go with a turn. All right, with a claw and this claw arm, because it's not a full range of motion, you see how the uh, arm moves up and down, but it doesn't go um, like multiple rotations like a like a uh, wheel can. Uh, same with the claw. The claw uh, only opens and closes in a limited range. We definitely need to set a timeout value for these. Otherwise, it's going to mean that uh, sometimes it will jam and get stuck on a line of code. 
All right, so let's set timeouts for both our uh, motors. So here, after our arm um, spin four, going to go set timeout, one second for the arm. We're also going to do one second for the claw as well. Make sure the indents are correct. I mean, with C++, doesn't really matter, but for us, we want to make sure that it is a little bit more manageable. Spin forward 90 degrees, I want to just go, uh, say, two turns. This is for the arm. So I want to test to see which direction this spins, okay? So forward, I want it to be moving up, okay? And reverse, I want it to be moving down. So I've downloaded the code, I'm going to have a look at my table again. All right, so if I run this code, it should move my arm up. And it doesn't. Okay, so I just press play and you can see that it just pressed the arm closer to the robot. I'll show you again. Okay, you can hear the motor struggling, uh, but after one second, it times out. No matter, we're going to go back into our software and I'll click on my devices, look for my arm motor, and then I need to change the direction in which our, we are spinning. Press done and download the code again and now it should successfully lift our robot arm nope ah okay interesting uh that was our arm motor mm, arm motor normal reverse done spin forward two turns Oh, actually, it did work. It was because it was uh, it was just caught on, on a cable. All right, so that's great. I thought something weird had happened. All right, so uh, that's what you do. Inside your code, if you have uh, got your robot... Oh, here's another thing that you can do. If you want this arm to move more powerfully, you can set the maximum torque. So here we got our motor for our maximum torque. Go over here, set max torque, uh, set it to 100%. How's that? 100% is going to mean that we have more power. All right, download it again. This time, it's going to have no problems lifting the arm up. Okay, let's check this out. Download the code, run. Beautiful. Okay, that's looking really good. How about the claw? Okay, so the claw is exactly the same thing. I go over here, I'm going to add the claw. Uh, actually, I'll just go claw here, okay? Comment that out. And then instead of arm, we're putting claw, spin forward. Forward, I want it to open, and reverse, I want it to close. So I'm going to test this out first. Make sure that, oh, I also want to set the max torque for the claw as well. So here, torque is power, velocity is speed. Okay, let's download the code, let's run. Do it again. So that's actually closing the claw. So same thing as the arm motor, I'm going to have to reverse my claw directions. Uh, here, click on the claw, reverse that, done. Download the code and run it again. Oh, nobody saw that because the camera was not looking. All right, let's have a look at this. Okay, very, very cool stuff. Now we can do things like uh, move our robot forward, uh, pinch, it, uh, pinch your claw shut, uh, lift up your motor, and then... Um, release it I guess. Uh, I'm gonna find something for my robot to grab. All right, I've got this 3D printed um... <gasps> All right, I've got this 3D printed elephant that I'm going to get uh, the claw to grab. Okay, so I'm gonna put it down first. Let's go back into our code. 
Uh, let's say uh, spin forward for. Okay, so this is going to open the claw. And then we're going to uh, close the claw. Uh, and then we want to move our arm up. Okay. Uh, and then we can drop it, I guess. So let's do that. All right, let's uh, download this code and see what happens. All right, let's run it. Okay. Open, close, oh, lift up, and it drops. But as soon as it drops, it also uh, lowers the arm as well. It's because the whole robot has unpowered all of the motors. You can see that once the program stops, it unpowers the motors. Let's have a look at that again. Open, close, up, lift, and close. Now, what happened there? It's because after we close the claw, so you see when this robot closes the claw, it doesn't actually apply any more force onto the claw. It just closed. Uh, and then, because it's finished its move, it just stops powering up the claw. So we need to find a solution. We need the claw to be maintaining some kind of grip by adding some constant force. And that is when the spin, uh, just the spin function, is going to solve our problem. Okay, let's have a look at this. Here, instead of uh, spinning for reverse uh, for two turns, we're just going to start spinning. We're just going to uh, spin uh, indefinitely. So here we go, um, uh, motor spin. But instead of the arm, we're going to spin the claw. We're going to spin reverse. What this does is that it closes the claw uh, and it keeps on closing. All right. But as soon as it has run this line, it's going to skip to the next line. And we don't want to do that. We don't need to give it some time to close before we lift the arm. So here we're going to wait for a second. And the wait function is inside your controls. Here we can go wait for uh, one second. Okay, you know what? I'm going to give it two seconds just to give it enough time. Then we lift the arm and then we uh, release it again. Uh, and hopefully this is going to solve our issue. Okay, so back to our table. All right, now I'm going to run, open up, close, and you can see it's maintaining a much tighter grip now. Okay, oh, that was awesome. Uh, it just dropped it, it's like passed it to me. All right, let's do it again. Okay, really, really cool stuff. Now I spent a lot of my time writing tutorials, testing the code and editing these videos together. So if you find any of it helpful, then please consider liking and subscribing to my channel. It is your support that lets me continue making coding videos. So I thank you in advance. Next lesson, we are going to look at how we can use variables, loops and toggles to improve the performance of our robot claw. Hope to see you then. Take care. Bye-bye.